Hi there guys, so this video is a tutorial about how to set up a reverse proxy on an Unraid server. So just what is a reverse proxy? Well a reverse proxy is something that sits behind your firewall yet it's accessible from the internet. What it does is it redirects requests made to it to the appropriate server or in the use case we're doing in this video for Unraid, the appropriate docker container running on the server and the reverse proxy gives us an additional layer of abstraction by protecting the things behind the proxy, therefore giving an additional layer of defence against a malicious attack. Now, in my personal opinion, using OpenVPN is the most secure way to access things on your network, but a reverse proxy is definitely a close second. And also, an OpenVPN connection isn't always the right tool for the job. One example being, accessing your next cloud server from the internet. This use case is where a reverse proxy really shines. So this video will show you how to set up and use a reverse proxy. So if that's something you'd like to do, then let's get started. Ok, so before we start, we're going to have to do a bit of planning and think of how this is going to work. Right, so this diagram represents our reverse proxy. On the far right hand side, that cloud thingy, that's meant to represent the internet. In the middle, obviously, the thing with the two aerials, that's our firewall modem router. To the left of that, that represents our reverse proxy. Then on the far left, that's our Unraid server, where all our Docker containers are running. To be able to access our Unraid server over the internet, through the reverse proxy, we'll need to be able to track what our internet ISP assigned IP address is. Because most of us probably won't have a static IP address for our WAN IP, so we'll need to use a DNS tracker service such as DuckDNS. Now I have a video about this which you can watch here. So after we've set something up to track our DNS, how do we use that? Well. Let's imagine that I've set up the DuckDNS tracker to be spaceinvadeserver.duckdns.org and the duckdns.org part here, that's the domain name but the part before, the spaceinvadeserver.part, part that's the subdomain that was created when I set it up in DuckDNS and so the subdomain spaceinvadeserver.duckdns that points through to the IP address of my WAN which is 212.92.114.18. So now that means that we've got a subdomain that points across to the WAN IP address that our server's on. And we want to connect to our proxy using HTTPS. So of course we're going to need a valid SSL certificate. And because we've got this subdomain that points to our server, we can use Let's Encrypt, which is running inside our proxy, and use that to create a valid certificate for the subdomain spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org and the good thing is is we don't have to have control over the full domain because obviously I'm not going to have any control over the duckdns.org part but Let's Encrypt will create a certificate because it will validate itself by going out to the internet and seeing if it can connect back using that subdomain spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org and if it can validate itself it will then create a certificate so because of this validation process, it's really important that before we try and create any certificates, that we've forwarded the correct ports in our firewall router, so this validation can actually take place. Because if it can't get through, then the validation can't complete. So it's important before starting this project, we do all of our port forwarding in our router first. Ok, so our reverse proxy can connect to things in two different ways. It can connect using just the subdomain, such as spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org, and that can connect through to one thing. And then to connect through to another thing, we'd need another subdomain, so maybe spaceinvadernextcloud.duckdns.org, and that would connect through to that. But there's another way as well, we can use a subfolder. So we could have spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org, and then forward slash sonar, and that would connect through to sonar. And then we could have another spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org forward slash nextcloud and that would connect to nextcloud. But for nextcloud it is advised that you use a subdomain 
as it's better security. So obviously using a lot of subdomains with something like DuckDNS, whilst it is possible, it's going to be pretty inconvenient because each subdomain is going to have to be updated with your WAN IP address, even though it's going to be the same for each. So the best thing to do is to use your own domain name. Now domains nowadays are really cheap. You can get them for say £6 or about $10, so it's well worth spending that money. And then once you've got your own domain, you can create multiple subdomains of that. So you could create sonar.mydomain, you could have radar.mydomain, you could have nextcloud.mydomain, you can have as many as you want. All you'd have to do for these records is create what's called a C name, which should point to the dynamic IP tracker. So all of the subdomains would point to spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org. And so that's the only thing that needs to have its IP address updated using the DuckDNS client. So it is better to buy a domain name, but it isn't essential. So hopefully that gives you a basic idea of what we're doing and how we're going to set it up. I think knowing the basics really helps setting it up and it makes it a lot easier. So first let's look at planning our proxy and setting up our DNS when we don't have our own domain name. So if we're not using our own domain name, then we're going to be using the domain name of our dynamic DNS service. And in this example, duckdns.org. So what we set up at duckdns.org has to point to our ISP WAN, which in turn points to our server. So the first subdomain I'd set up at duckdns would be spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org. So we could just leave it at that and we can access one service from that domain and then other services coming off that with a subfolder, for example, forward slash nextcloud and forward slash sonar. However, in my opinion, it's much better to use a separate subdomain for each service. And so for nextcloud, something like spaceinvadernextcloud.duckdns.org and for sonar, spaceinvadersonar.duckdns.org. So if you're not using your own domain name, then just think how many subdomains you're going to need and then set them up accordingly. So I'm going to set up these three now. So those three domains are set up. And it looks like we can have actually up to five different domains with one account. So if you're going to have more than that, then you'd have to set up more than one account. So now all of these subdomains are pointing through to my current IP address. But to keep them always pointing at the correct IP address, you're going to have to set them up in a DuckDNS client. Now, I've shown how to set up a DuckDNS client on Unraid before, but all you'd have to do different to that video is to put in the multiple subdomains separated by a comma, like you can see here. So now let's look at how we'd plan things if we do have our own domain name, using the domain name reverseproxy.me. So I'll quickly register that domain now. So with our domain, we're still going to use DuckDNS to track our IP, but we only need one instance of it, and so I'm going to use spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org. But then, just as before, I want to have three subdomains. So I'm going to use server.reverseproxy.me, nextcloud.reverseproxy.me, and sonar.reverseproxy.me. And for each of these subdomains, we're going to create a C name that points to spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org, which in turn points to our WAN IP. So always the subdomains are going to have our server WAN IP address. So let's create the C names now. So once you've bought your domain name, most registrars will have somewhere where you can adjust the DNS. So find that place for your registrar and click on Edit DNS. So this is what my DNS zone editor looks like. Now yours may well be different, but the principle will be exactly the same. Here I can actually filter the different records. If I click onto C name, I can see the existing C names that are already set up for this domain. You can see I've got mail dot and www dot. So I'm going to make a new record now. So just click onto add record. And then for the type, I want C name. And I'm going to put in server. And then the record's going to point to, it must be a fully qualified domain name. And I'm going to point it through to the DuckDNS DNS tracker I set up earlier. and click add record. Okay, so now I'll quickly put in the other two subdomains. Okay, so now I've got the three subdomains all pointing across to spaceinvaderserver.duckdns.org. Okay, so we've planned out our proxy 
both with our own domain name and without. So now it's time to move on to forwarding the correct ports on our firewall. And we're going to need to open up two ports, port 80 and port 443. However, we're not going to forward those ports as is. We're going to redirect them to another port. And that's because Unraid uses both port 80 and port 443 for its own purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward my port 80 to port 180 and I'm going to forward my port 443 to 1443. So how to port forward will vary depending on what make and model number of router you have. So if you're not sure how to port forward with your router, just do a Google search for the model number and also port forwarding and I'm sure you'll find some info that will be helpful. Now I use PFSense myself, so I'm going to show the port forwarding on that. So I'm going to head across to the port forwarding section and I'm going to add HTTP which is port 80 and forward it to the IP address of my Unraid server and I'm going to forward it to the custom port 180 and I'm going to give the rule of description and if you're using PFSense and I recommend just enabling that reflection it's unlikely that you'll find this option on any other router so just don't bother about it if you can't see it and then basically go through exactly the same process except for HTTPS or port 443 and just make sure you forward it across to the destination port which is 1443. Okay so when you've done your port forwarding let's move on to the next step. Now this step is important so please don't skip it. We need to make a user defined bridge rather than using the Unraid default bridge and that's because using a user defined bridge gives us automatic DNS resolution between containers. Okay so the first thing we need to do is go over to the settings and then go to our docker settings and we need to temporarily disable the docker service so put this on to no and click apply. Now we need to change from basic view to advanced view here and here where it says preserve user defined networks we need to select that onto yes and click apply and now we can re-enable the docker service and apply again and done. So next we want to open the terminal window into Unraid so click onto the terminal icon at the top and now we need to type docker network create and space and now we need to name our network I'm going to call it proxynet and just press enter and so now we've created a new docker network called proxynet so I'm going to close this now and so now finally at last we're ready to install the let's encrypt docker container okay so let's head across to the apps tab and let's do a search for let's encrypt and click onto the green button to install the container and if we scroll down, now uh, before we fill out anything here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the network type. And we're going to change the network type to the custom Docker network that we created earlier. And I named mine ProxyNet. Now we don't need to fill out anything here at all, we can leave that as it is. Now here we come to the port numbers, so the container port is port 80 and port 443. But earlier on my firewall, I translated port 80 to port 180 and port 443 to port 1443. So I'm going to put in those numbers here. Okay, so here we need to pop in our email address. And here under domain name, we need to put the domain name that we're using. Now, if you have your own domain name, then you'd put that in here. But if you're using DuckDNS, you just put in duckdns.org then un underneath where it says subdomains we're going to remove the www and I'm going to put in the subdomains that I created at duckdns.org which is space invader server and then put a comma and then the next subdomain which was space invader nextcloud and the last one I did was space invader sonar and here where it says only subdomains, we want to change that to true because we only want Let's Encrypt to try and make certificates for the subdomains because obviously this domain being duckdns.org, I don't have any control over that. I only have control over the subdomains here. So change this from false to true. Now then scroll down, we leave everything else as it is. The validation is HTTP. And then click on apply and it will pull down the container and then click on done. Now let's go across to our Docker tab here and we can see the Let's Encrypt container here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto the log here. And if we look through the log here, 
we can see that Let's Encrypt performed some tests on these subdomains here and then it waited for verification. There are no errors at all. And at the bottom, you can see it says server ready. So we know everything's good. So now I'm going to disable the port forwarding on my router and show you the log file that will be generated when Let's Encrypt can't get through properly. So you can see here there's no server ready at the bottom, but we can see that the authorization has failed. That's the yellow part at the top, and it actually tells us that it's a likely firewall problem, which it is. So the log files are useful to see what's going on. That's why it's important after first creating the container to look at your log files straight away just to check that everything's fine before moving on to the next stage. And hopefully you'll see at the bottom server ready. If not, then you're going to have to go back through all of your settings, your DNS and everything like that and check that everything's fine. Okay, so when I just set up the container, I showed putting in the settings to create certificates for the DuckDNS subdomains. So if you're using your own domain, it's just the same, but using your domain details and the subdomains that you created C names for earlier. So let's quickly look at that too. Okay, so everything's the same at the top. The network type is set to custom and the ports are mapped as they were before. So the thing that's different is the domain name. I'm going to put in my domain name here, which is reverseproxy.me. And for the subdomains, I'm going to put in the three subdomains I created C names for earlier. And that's server, comma, nextcloud, comma, sonar. And then again, as before, only subdomains, we want that set to true. And that's it. So let's go down to the bottom of the page and just click on to apply and then click done. So then just as before, let's check our log file to check that the certificates were created correctly. And it says server ready, so everything's good. So now let's move on to the next stage. Right, now for all of the containers that you want to use with your proxy, we're going to have to change the Docker network that they're on. We're also going to have to change them to our custom network. And the two that I'm using in this tutorial are Nextcloud and Sonar, as these are the two containers which I want to access through the Let's Encrypt Reverse Proxy. So let's go to Edit, and I'm going to change the network type on this container to match the one on the Let's Encrypt container. So again, I'm going to change this to Custom and to my ProxyNet network. And click Apply, then Done. And the same for Sonar. And again, Apply and done. Now don't worry, although we've actually changed the network that the Docker container runs on, we can still access it through the normal IP address. So if I was to click on Web UI, I can still access it through 10.10.20.199. So for us on Raiders from a user perspective, everything's exactly the same. Okay, so now we should have all of our containers which we want to access through the proxy onto the custom Docker network. So now let's go on to the next stage. Okay, so we're almost done now. We're just going to have to edit some files inside the configuration folder of Let's Encrypt, which is mapped across to our app data, as you can see here. And so the file we need to edit is in app data, Let's Encrypt, Nginx, and then inside the proxy config here. Now the Linux server guys have done all the hard work for us by creating these configuration files. So I'm going to edit the Sonar configuration file here and I'm going to choose the sonar.subdomain one here as I'm using a subdomain. And now make sure you open it with a proper text editor. I'm using TextMate on OS X. If you're using Windows, then I suggest using the text editor Notepad++. Now the line I want to point out here is the one that starts with server underscore name. This one here. This line sets the name of the subdomain which is connecting to this container. So the line here reads server underscore name space sonar dot asterisk which is a wildcard. So what this basically means is any subdomain starting with sonar dot is going to be passed through to this particular container. So my subdomain is sonar dot reverse proxy dot me. So this line is going to be fine for that subdomain. But if I didn't have my own domain name, the chances of me being able to have sonar dot for my subdomain is very slim. When I set up my DuckDNS subdomains, I had to use space invader sonar.duckdns.org. So if I was using that subdomain, I'd have to change this line to be server underscore name space space invader sonar.asterix semicolon. 
so depending on what your subdomain is called, you may possibly have to change this line. But for me, because my subdomain was sonar dot, I didn't have to change this. And normally, there shouldn't be anything else you need to change in this file, unless you're not using a Linux server container. So all of these configuration files are configured to work with other Linux server Docker containers. But if you see here, I'm not using the Linux server sonar Docker container, I'm using the bin hex one. So there's just one thing I need to change here. I just need to change this line here, where it says set upstream underscore sonar space sonar. So this is the name of the container here, but because mine here is called bin hex hyphen sonar, I'm gonna to have to adjust it to that. So it's just setting the name of the container to this variable here. So now I'm gonna save this file, but I'm gonna change the name slightly. I'm gonna take off the dot sample at the end, just so it's .conf and I'm going to click save and now I can close this. Now what I could have done instead of actually editing the name inside of the configuration file, I could have just edited the name of the container and changed this to being sonar. But personally I don't really want to change the name of my containers, I'd rather change things inside the configuration file. And of course if you're using a Linux server container then you don't have to change anything at all. Okay, so now that's done, I can restart the Let's Encrypt container and I go to open a new tab and go to https colon forward slash forward slash sonar dot reverse proxy dot me. And here we are in my sonar here and everything's working fine. Now one thing to notice here, you can see I've come straight into this container. So if you're going to use a reverse proxy and you're going into containers, you're going to need to set up a password. So I'm going to put the one in for me here and the password base invader one. And I'm going to click save and I'm going to close sonar and I'm going to restart the container. And I'm going to open the tab again and log back in and now it's asking me for my password. And I'm back in. Okay, so let's close Sonar. And now let's set up Nextcloud. Now Nextcloud is slightly different. There's one extra step we have to do. We have to edit a configuration file in Nextcloud itself. So again, let's go to our app data. And go to Nextcloud. And go to www. And then into the folder Nextcloud. And then into the folder config. And here you'll find a file config.php. So again, open this file with the text editor. And so the first thing we need to do is add a line under this one here, which looks like this, one space equals greater than space, and then in quotations, you need to put your subdomain, and mine is nextcloud.reverseproxy.me, then close the quotations and a comma. Now next we have to change this line here that starts with overwrite.cli, and we need to change here, we need to take out the IP address here and the port number. And again, we need to paste in our subdomain. So it should now read https colon forward slash forward slash, then your subdomain in quotes, followed by a comma. Okay, so there's another line we need to add here. And that's in quotes, overwrite host space equals greater than space, and then in quotes, again, our subdomain. And then finally, one last line, which reads in quotes, overwrite protocol space equals greater than space, and then in quotes, HTTPS and a colon. And what this does is force Nextcloud to only use HTTPS. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So you just need to change those things in your Nextcloud configuration. And now we can save this, overwriting the other file. So next we want to go back to our app data then go to the Let's Encrypt folder, into Nginx, and back into proxy configs. Then we want to go to the Nextcloud subdomain configuration file, and we can either rename it so it isn't .sample. I'm going to open mine. Everything in here is correct for me. My server name is correct here because my subdomain is Nextcloud. So I'm just going to save this, but removing the .sample. Okay, so that's everything done. So now we need to restart Let's Encrypt. And also we need to restart Nextcloud. 
Now if I go and open a new tab and if I go to https forward slash forward slash nextcloud.reverseproxy.me then here I am at my Nextcloud login. And here we have Nextcloud working absolutely fine. So let's close that now. So that's our reverse proxy all set up and working. To access other containers through the proxy, it's just the same. Now personally, I prefer using subdomains to access things on the proxy. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can also use subfolders. So let's quickly set up radar to be accessed through a subfolder. So let's go back to our app data and then let's encrypt into the nginx folder and back to the proxy configs. Now this time I'm going to choose the radar subfolder here and I'm going to edit that. So let's look at the configuration. Now we can see here where it says location then space forward slash radar. That's the actual subfolder. And again, because I'm using a bin hex container and not a Linux server one, I'm going to have to change the name of the container here. So I'm just changing it to bin hex hyphen radar. So now let's save this file, but taking off the dot sample as before. Now we can close this and we're going to have to make a few changes to radar. So let's edit the configuration. And again, we need to change the network to our custom one and click apply and done. And also we need to make a change inside of the radar configuration on the web UI. So let's go to settings and then general. And then here where it says URL base, we need to put in the subfolder there. So forward slash radar. So now let's click save and let's restart radar and restart let's encrypt. Now let's open a new tab and see if we can connect. So we need to put in a subdomain and then forward slash radar. Now this subdomain, it can't be used for anything else, like if you're using subdomains and subfolders together. Now I also set up a subdomain server.reverseproxy.me. So I'm gonna type in that and then forward slash radar and see if we can connect. Okay, great, so I'm connected to radar and it seems to be working fine. So now I'm gonna close this and then wrap up this video. So, okay, here we are at the end of the video. Now, just one thing to note, you may try and test your reverse proxy after setting it up and find that it doesn't seem to work. This can be because your router doesn't support NAT reflection. Now, not many consumer routers do. So to get around this, all you have to do is just connect your PC using a VPN, and then you can test the proxy from an IP that isn't your own WAN IP address. So anyway, the next part of this video, we're going to be setting up a Docker container called Himdal. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a really nice container that you can actually use as the home page for your browser, allowing you to access all of your containers, etc. And we'll be looking at it, using it with the reverse proxy and without. Anyway, that's next time. And for now, it's time for me to go. Now, I really hope that you found this video useful. And if you did, then please, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And to all of my patrons and supporters out there, a huge, huge thank you. It's you guys who make these videos possible. So anyway, guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you all next time.